Hey guys, Steve here at SKS Props, and today is going to be part one of what it takes to put together one of my Wasteland Alice gas masks. Hey guys, Steve here at SKS Props, and I am in the shop today with my good buddy, Lauren, from Thousand Faces Cosplay. I'm sure you guys have seen her around the internet doing crazy things as Harley and as, of course, Tiny Tina. She is in the shop today because she's got a new cosplay that she's working on and it ties back to a little project I've been spending a lot of time on that is Wasteland Alice so it is Alice in Wonderland in a post-apocalyptic scenario you can go to sksprops.com and check out a whole bunch of the stuff I have coloring books and playing cards available right now and a graphic novel in the works so you want to be Alice, mm -hmm. and why do you want to be Alice? Because crazy is sort of my thing. It is sort of your yeah. thing. Um, what I really like about your concept of Wasteland Alice is that I obviously love Alice in Wonderland. Like, obviously a thing that I enjoy. Um, but I really love having a different take on that classic. Um, I love your characters. They're so rich in detail. Their backstories are so fun. Um, and Alice is Psycho, which is my kind of wheelhouse. It, it is. So, yeah. so the, not to give too much of it away, but Alice is mentally messed up. Despite, like, basically we use the names of these characters, but it is nothing like the original story. Um, in our story, Alice has a gas mask uh, that is shaped like the Cheshire Cat. Yes. Because Chesh is in her mind, and it is what drives her in this quest for revenge um, story thing. Yeah. <coughs> Not to give away too much. Lo lovable story tales. And so with Laura today, we are going to be making a Wasteland Alice mask specifically for her. So the Wasteland Alice mask that I did, I hand sculpted out of monster clay and then this was molded and we are going to do a resin cast version. So for the molding process, we have silicone and we have a mother mold and we're going to be pouring our resin in here. You've never done this before, have you? Nope, nope never done this before. So it's going to be a learning experience for you guys and for it's, Lauren. It's It'll all, be great. It's, it's all going to be fine. So <laughs> this is fine. Let's get started. All right, when it comes to resin casting, again, we've got our silicone mold and everything. It's all good to go. Um, it has been sprayed with some release agent on there. And this is the resin that we're going to be using. Smoothcast 65D. Yep, and 65D is designed for roto casting and slush casting. So that's why, that's, that's the one we're gonna go with. So the other one that I use a lot is Smoothcast 300, mm -hmm. which is what I use for a lot of weapons. Mm -hmm. And because you're just doing a straight pour, it doesn't, um, it's not as thick. So it doesn't trap as many air bubbles straight out the gate, that okay. sort of thing. This stuff though, it's a little bit thicker. And so when you are, rotating it around, it sticks to the walls better. Okay. So, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our gloves on, so we... Um, I can't help but notice this. these aren't child size. They are not, they're gonna be a little bit big on you. <laughs> 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 All right, so once we have our gloves, we've got our mixing cups here, and you wanna be very, very careful not to mix into the wrong way, or drink it, I mean, either oh, one, all right. terrible. So the way that I like to do it is, we've got yellow and blue, so I don't mess up. Because if like you were to use Smooth On, the Onyx version of this, one is black and one is brown when you pour them out, so you can see a difference. These are both clear though, when they come out. So I like to label one with a Y, and then put what direction I'm gonna pour it, and label one with a B, and put what direction you're gonna pour it. And usually when I'm doing a mask like this, if I have extra resin, I'll always have block molds out. So if I've got, I'm not wasting it. Right. I always have something extra. First thing we do, I know on this particular mask, we do it about halfway up on that line. So right about there. Pour blue out into that one. Same amount. Right, so it's a little too much, which is why we have our pour line, right? Yay! So that way we are not cross-contaminating yes. the different resins. Okay. So take both of those okay. 
use your pour lines and pour them into the mixing cup. All right, now take your tongue depressor and squiggle that all up. It'll set and actually kick is what they call it in about five. Okay. So that stresses me out a lot. It is. It, it, okay. It, it, Everything's fine. All right. So we got that mixed up. Okay. Then we take it and slowly pour it into the mold because you want to minimize the amount of air bubbles that you get in there, right? Mm -hmm. Once I'm going to do first layer and then I'm going to let you do layer two, okay? okay. Layer two is going to be awful. It's, it's I mean, it's going to be fine. No. It's fine. So the biggest thing you want to deal with with layer one okay. is making sure that the liquid resin gets all over the entire surface okay. that will be that will be cast. Reason is, if I miss a spot and I have to go back on layer two to cover that, mm -hmm. you'll see a seam line where those layers meet up. Okay. So this is the detail layer. This is the one you want to make sure that that resin gets everywhere. Okay. Now, when I do my masks, I've found out that four layers, four thin layers of resin is key. For layer number one, we get it everywhere. And this is the time too, if I see spots that I know that trap a lot of air bubbles, I'll take my tongue depressor and I'll knock those air bubbles out of those areas. Layer one, we're gonna pull all the resin over here. Layer two, we coat, we pull all the resin over here. Layer three, we pull it in the middle. Layer four, we do the entire surface again. Okay, so- You got my, that. My, yeah, so I got an English degree, so numbers are hard. So I'm um, layer two. <laughs> You're layer two. So what I'm so doing I'll be on that here, side, right? Okay. Yep, you'll be doing the other okay. side. So what I like to do is take my tongue depressors, and if resin is building up in an area, I move it around because I know kind of spots where the resin gets a little bit thin. And with my masks, I make sure that they're all, you know, pretty substantial as far mm -hmm. as durability goes. So it's turning white. Does that mean it's that's kicking? Doing its thing. Yep. That is the chemicals are working together. It's doing its thing. And it's turning into liquidified plastic right now that will harden. Now this is really important. You don't wait for that to completely cure until you add your next layer because okay. then they can delaminate. So layer number two, we're gonna go ahead and do right now. Okay. And then I just pour it right in the middle. In the middle? Yep. Two hands. This is so much. Just Swish it around and, and make sure it covers the entire area. Okay. I'm sweating. I'm so stressed out. <laughs> All right, let me see it real fast. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do it. Because at this stage, the other thing that I look for are bubbles that have formed okay. from the previous one. So right. if I have like right all those little dots, mm -hmm. what I'll do is I'll take the resin, push it over that area, and then take my tongue depressor and lightly scrub that surface, and it will release the bubble, and it will go away. What? Take this, I'm gonna hold it. Okay. You take it, and just kind of push the resin up into that area, up into the very corner, and then kind of pull it up here along the jawline a little bit, because I know it gets thin there. Yeah. And don't chemical burn me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. And I found out a lot of people don't do this method that I do by moving the resin when it's in this state. Um, it's just, and it's not saying that it's right or wrong, it's just something that I've learned to do and it's worked really well for me over the years. It, uh, it allows me to control, so I'm not getting a ridiculous amount of resin in one area and I'm able to strengthen parts of the mask that I know get a little bit thin. All right, so when it gets to this part where it starts to kick, yeah. don't mess with it anymore. Okay. So the reason is, if I was to continue to pull on this, it'll actually pull away from the first the layer, layer that's right. down there. So we got layer two on there. We're gonna move cameras real fast and once you get layer three ready, so we've got layer three going right now. Lauren is mixing it up. You can see layer one and two have already kicked. They've already turned white. 
All right, we're good? Yep. All right, throw it in there. And the other thing you'll notice is every layer that you pour in will get the kick time on it will get faster and faster because this is releasing a lot of heat yeah. right now. So what we're doing here, see it's getting thicker and thicker. When it's to that point, kind of like the consistency of a honey, that's where you can really start moving it around to spots that have not got enough resin yet. So that's layer three. All right, so this is layer number four. It's hot in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, at this point, yeah, I mean, you got three, it's, yeah, it's three other layers. It's hot in the cup, too. And it's really started to uh, build up a lot of heat. And again, that's why it's, if you're casting in the summertime mm -hmm. in the Midwest, you know, this, this type of a mask that may take half an hour to 40 minutes to cure during the winter usually takes about 20 minutes. That's because we live inside the sun, Steven. I know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Midwest weather. So we got our four layers in there. We're just gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes and cure up and then we'll demold it. All right, so it's been about eight minutes or so. It is not fully cured. You don't want to wait till it fully cures in the mold. You want a little bit of give to it. And the reason is, when I've got my mother mold, the detail mold on here has these locking keys. Okay. And so if you were to wait till this to fully cure, the Max would have no, no flexibility to it and it would lock in the mold. So there's no way to get it out. Yep. Mm -hmm. So once we got that, do you want to do the, the unveiling? Yes, you do. Oh, Come on. So, okay. All right, so okay, okay. Let's take. Let me let me start it. Cause... Yeah. So you start. You start. <gasps> this looks fun. If I ruin it, we're still friends, right? It's perfect. Okay. Oh. All right. So you just peel it off slowly. Ooh, it's for... hot. Yeah, it's hot. It's really hot. It's that chemical reaction. Yeah, luckily this mask doesn't have too many really bad undercuts in it. That's the resin after it's come out. Now I know that I've got a couple spots on here that this mold I've used lots of times. I've, I've sold quite a few of the Alice masks. And so I've got some air bubbles that I know are in there. Aw, the, the cutest little air bubble. A little air bubble. And look how cute it is. They're not cute on there though when it, when they're no. ruining my I don't get that stuff ruining off my of there. finish. Get get it off of there. But they're cute when they're off of it. Ah! Okay, now we're gonna trim it in probably about a quarter of an inch on either side and get rid of all that flashing junk that's there. I have such a tiny face. Such a tiny face. That's <laughs> why we're having to do this. <laughs> the masks that fit normal person do not fit Lauren. Do not so. fit the Laurens. All right, so we'll get this all measured up and we'll get it on there, we'll get it cleaned up and then I'll do a paint job on it and then we'll have the finished mask for you. I and, didn't mess it up! And your very first resin cast. Ah! <laughs> I mean, that's cool, Steven, here you go. All right, guys, that's a wrap on part one of what it takes to put together one of my Wasteland Alice gas masks. This is Lauren's mask. I have sanded it, I've assembled it, I've put all the respirators and the additional nuts and bolts on there. So in my next video, I'm going to show you guys all the painting techniques that it takes to get it from a blank resin cast to something that looks like it belongs in the wasteland. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe and be sure to swing back by next time for more tips and tutorials. Until then, thanks for stopping by.